Well, welcome to my studio. I'm working on a painting of Tuscany. This little hilltop village is San Gimignano. Jack and I visited there in 2004, and it's just a delightful place. You feel like you've stepped back in time. It, it's just absolutely incredible. I hope to go there again one day. And anyway, I'm going to be painting this village. And I've shown you my painting. I've gone ahead and done the sky. And it's a sunset. And what I've done is I've made sure I want the sky behind these towers to be dark so that the light really plays off of them. So the village, there's lots of little buildings in here. And I'm just scumbling at lots of different mixtures of white plus my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson. I've got, this is a mixture of white plus ultramarine blue. Then I have some mixes of, well, I need to make myself a mix. This is going to be mud plus a little bit of cadmium orange, just to give a little warmer tone in there. I'm mixing this with mud, cadmium orange, plus white. And this just gives me a little warmer tone within buildings because some of the buildings are stone. And then this is going to be a mixture of my ultramarine blue plus white. And I had to mix some so I can wipe, I wipe off my painting knife with my tissue. And then I just come back in and add some lighter buildings in here. This is just, like I say, I just, as Jack would you always used to say, he says, you're just smushing a bunch of color up there. But I like to keep my brush clean. I wash it, wipe it out quite a bit so that each of my little brush strokes, I don't want the colors on my brush to, I want, I'm not sure exactly how to say this, I just want the colors to remain separate when I put them up with the, I want the brush to be clean so that I get variation within the strokes. And that village comes all the way down. There's a hill here that then the village kind of goes in down behind. And this part below is all in shadow. And then the light is going to hit just the top of the village up here. Got trees in here. Some of those tall cedar trees that you see in Tuscany. So I and this you know, so I want to get this totally covered. Here with some of my mud plus white. You can just see there's lots of variation in there. You'll see when I start putting in my little roofs how that'll begin to start look like buildings. I'm going to get a little darker here. This part of the village is not much sun's hitting back here. And the village goes, this painting goes on around the edge of the canvas. So I can just, I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. I can go back later when I, I can turn my easel and walk around that side and, and get that. And then there's going to be a little tower right here. San Gimignano has lots of towers. It was built on a hill. The towers were for protection. They had lookouts all the time up in those towers watching for intruders. And gosh, centuries ago, 13th century, 14th century. This town was totally wiped out by the bubonic plague. And I think it was the 13th century, and people did not live there for quite some time, but then it was re, repopulated. And uh, just, like I say, if you ever get to Tuscany, really make an effort to go here, because you just feel like you've stepped back in time. I'm putting some darker brush strokes of my ultramarine blue plus white. There's going to be some trees out in here, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about that right now. But... What I want to do now that I've kind of got this covered 
is now with a smaller brush I come back in and this is my bright brush this has a square end and the bristles the difference between a bright brush and a flat is the bright the bristles are shorter and I like it because it gives me a little bit more control but you can see with that square brush I can add my little rooftops in there and it just gives me just the shapes and all that I need but I start just adding little rooftops in here. And all of a sudden that starts to begin to look like a little village up here. And I can kind of go along some of my brush strokes. This is a little lighter one. So I have a little lighter roof on here. But not too light down this low. Up here is where I really want my lighter brush strokes of the roofs. But I keep these horizontal so that it looks like, like buildings back in there. Now I'm going to start using some lighter brush strokes up here, my lighter colors, because this is where the sunlight's catching. Bigger brush here. And this is white plus a little ultramarine blue, then I'm using white plus a little of my mud plus cadmium orange. Some whiter. So just the top of this hill catches the light. and it, That's why I wanted those dark hills, or the dark clouds up there behind because then this will really glow in that sunlight. I'm going to start putting then some of my lighter rooftops up here. And I can come in now with some vertical strokes that like give me the backs of my buildings or where shadows are coming down. So I start getting a little more of my color in there, that my lighter color. Then I can start going back in and delineating some of the buildings. Now before I go too much further, I'm going to add a couple of the towers in there just so you can see. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can just see how I do the towers. I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to get my moss stick, which I will hook this hooks over the top of my easel. You can see it's got a hook on it. This is actually used for lifting clothes off of a tall clothes rack in a store. But I can hook it over the top of my easel and this gives me a place to rest my hand. I can rest my hand on there and that steadies my hand as I make these brush strokes. So I want to just do my, I can just pull straight down and make my tower. The tower here. And the towers are at different angles to the light. So some are a little bit lighter and brighter. Some are darker. And they're also made out of different stone. So this, some of this stone is, is different. Now this one up here is going to be, this is a little wider tower. Go ahead and put that in there. And then that other tower will come in front of it. And I'm going to, at the base of that tower, I'm going to make use some of my darker color that I've used down below to kind of make the base of that darker. And then also the back side of that tower is dark because it's turned. So we, this side is catching the light and then this side is darker. And this tower is also bigger than some of the others. I'm 
like I said, it gets down here. Bring some of this darker color in here. And the tower in front of it catches more light. So that it also it pops forward. I use a little smaller brush. I have several of these bright brushes in different sizes. This is a number eight. And it's, it's really weird. Brushes, there's no consistent sizing. Um, some brands, I mean, it just depends on the brand of the brush. I So it's, it's hard when you're buying brushes online to really know what size, you know, they are until you really get them. I end up buying a lot of brushes sometimes that if they're not exactly what I like, then I just donate them to another artist. And usually they're just perfect for what they want. So this, this tower is lighter. And again, the back side of this tower, or the other side, is going to be darker. Grab another brush here. This side is a little darker. This, this tower comes in front of those buildings. And then this is a cool tower back here, and I noticed it when we were there. This one has kind of a, what they call a crenellated top. It has, there's some purples in here, some of my mud. I'm going to bring my sky down just a little bit. I have sky, I've saved all my sky colors so that I can, if I need to, I can work around the towers. And, I want this one to be a little bit shorter. Bring some of that. And I have to wipe my brush each time so I don't pull that tower color into my sky. I want my sky color to stay nice and crisp. Now the top edge of this tower is, like I said, is crenellated. And that's what, what it means by that is when it has that little up and down little like that. I'm not exactly sure. I think they're called embattlements. It's where they could stand behind the up the upper part and then stick their guns through and shoot out it at the enemies. And then we'll have another tower here. And this is just how this is how I paint all of the towers. And you can see how they're and I make them them warm. I want the light on them to be warm. And this, you can see with those dark clouds behind them, they really, they really glow in that light. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please also visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. And you just have a wonderful, wonderful day.